All right, today we're going to undo our multiplication. We are going to factor. This is a review of what we did last week. We multiplied two quantities together, two binomials. These two parentheses got multiplied together. X got distributed through, got multiplied by the X to give X squared, got multiplied by the 4 to give 4X. The 3 gets distributed through, 3 times X is 3X, and 3 times 4 is 12. I skipped that line, all you would have saw was an x squared, a 12, and then a 3x and a 4x, which you add together because those are the like terms, and that gives you 7x. Now, if you didn't have this first line and you had to factor x squared plus 7x plus 12, your answer would be two parentheses. It would be working back, it would be right back to where you started, and that's what you're going to have to do now. You're going to have to work backwards. You're not going to be given the two parentheses. You're going to be given the answer, and you have to find what two parentheses were used to multiply together to give this trinomial. And to do that, there's a trick. To come up with three and four, three and four are significant. Three and four add together to give the middle term. 7. 3 plus 4 is 7. Because you had 3x and you had 4x, you added those together to get 7x. So you're trying to come up with two numbers that add to give 7, and then 3 times 4 is how you get 12. So those same two numbers, <coughs> excuse me, have to multiply to give this last term 12. And that's 3 and 4. So it's going to start off like this. And you're just trying to fill in the blanks here. What are the two numbers? Well, it's a 3 and a 4. And the key is they add to give the middle term, and they multiply to give the third term. So let's try one from scratch here. Let's say we have x squared plus 10x plus 24. All right, so we have to factor this, x squared plus 10x plus 24. So to factor it, our answer is going to be two parentheses. Now I'm giving you all problem. This adding and multiplying trick only works if it's a 1x squared. As soon as you put, say, like a 2 or a 3 or some other number in front of your x squared, this trick doesn't work anymore. It becomes significantly more difficult. But for now, we're only going to have x squared, so you're not going to have to worry about the more difficult problems for now. So we're trying to come up with two numbers that add to give 10, multiply to give 24. Well, two numbers that add to give 10, there's a lot of them. There's 0 and 10. We're not going to use 0, but there's, I'm sorry, 1 and 10. That would multiply to give 10. We're trying to add to give 10, so there's... 1 and 9, 2 and 8, 3 and 7, 4 and 6. It's usually easier to look for combinations that multiply to give the last term, 24. So there's always 1 in itself. There's 2 and 12. There's 3 and 8. And there's 4 and 6. So those are our four different choices that we have. Is this going to be x plus 1 and x plus 24? Well, if that's the one you think it is, when you distribute, you would get 24x and you would get a 1x. Those would add together to give 25x, but we just need a 10x. So that's not going to be the right answer. So it's not 1 and 24. Even though 1 and 24 multiply to give 24, they don't add to give 10. It's got to work for both. It's got to add for 10, multiply for 24. So these all multiply to give 24. 2 times 12, 3 times 8, 4 times 6. The only one that adds to 10 is the last one. This one adds to 14. This one adds to 11. That one adds to 10. And it doesn't matter if you write the 4 or the 6 first. You could have had x plus 6 and x plus 4. Still get, it still means the same thing. So that's how you do these problems. It becomes a little bit trickier when one is positive and one is negative. E. So let's try one of those. Let's say this is minus four x. Now we'll go plus four x and minus twelve. 
Let's say you get something like that. If your last term is negative, that means what you were multiplying together, one was positive and one was negative. That's the only way to get a negative answer, a negative product, the answer to a multiplication problem. The only way to get a negative product is when you're multiplying a negative and a positive together. So we know in our parentheses now, our answer, one of them is going to be adding and one of them is going to be subtracting. So our answer is going to look like this. So what two numbers multiply to give 12? 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. Now when our last number is negative, when our C term is, is a minus, minus 12, it's negative, you're going to have to subtract to get these two instead of add. You're basically adding a negative, which is subtracting. So which one of these subtract to get 4? 2 and 6. But now the order does matter, because if you write the 2 first and the 6 last, then when you multiply your x times your negative 6 is going to give negative 6x, and your 2 times your x is going to give positive 2x, and when you combine those together, that gives you a negative 4x, but we don't want negative 4x, we want positive 4x. So that was the 6 that had to be positive and the 2 that had to be negative. And that would be right. If you put the plus 6 and the minus 2, now you've got a positive 6 and a negative 2, and that makes positive 4. So basically, if your last term is negative, you're going to be subtracting. And if this one's positive, your bigger one has to be positive. If this one's negative, if it was minus 4x, then the bigger number that you have has to be the minus one. It would have to be like this. All right, so if that one's negative, you're subtracting. If that one's positive, you're adding. And when you subtract, make sure the bigger one of these two numbers is the same sign as this term. What if they're both negative? Somebody's going to ask, what if they're both negative? Well, if they're both negative, it's what we just did. It's that right there. So you're really just looking at the last term. If the last term is positive, well, that's the other thing. All right. What if the last term is positive, but the middle one is negative? So what if we had this? x squared minus 7x plus 12. All right. In this case, the last one is positive. The middle one is negative. This means we're gonna we're still gonna add because the last one's positive. Whenever the last one's positive, you're adding. Whenever the last one's negative, you're subtracting. But here we're adding two negative numbers. So this would end up being x minus three and x minus four. Because when you distribute, you would get negative four x and negative three x, and those would combine to give negative 7x. All right, so four different examples here. It depends on the combinations of positives and negatives. If the last one is positive, you're adding to get the middle one. If the last one is negative, you're subtracting to get the middle one. All right, if you're adding because the last one's positive and the middle one is negative, then your answer is you're using two negatives. If the middle one's positive, then you're using two positives. All right, and if it's the last one's negative, if you're using one of each, you're subtracting, and whatever this is, that's the sign of your bigger number. If your middle term is positive, then your bigger number is positive. If your middle term is negative, then your bigger number is negative. So that's kind of, it's pretty basic, but yet there's four different combinations, so that's how it gets a little bit confusing. But I think a good trick is to write off to the side your multiples, what multiplies to give this last number like I was doing. And then you can see all your options right there, and then you should be able to figure it out.